Thank you for taking the time to learn about Z-Band's convergent technology that brings the world of RF and IP together and allows them to travel simultaneously over structured cabling. During this presentation, we'll be discussing how the technology works, the applications where Z-Band can be utilized, and some of the folks who have already discovered why Z-Band should be your distribution solution of choice. You can't talk about Z-Band without talking about the world of RF. After all, it's what makes the Z-Band system so unique. What is RF? Here is a little definition off the web, but basically RF is the means of communication for a number of different wired and wireless technologies. The RF spectrum, or bandwidth, whichever you prefer, has been divided up for the different technologies, so each has its own space in which it operates. This is most easily seen in the world of radio broadcast, but our focus today, of course, is the RF video spectrum, which falls in the 5 to 860 megahertz range. Who else is using RF other than radio stations and Bluetooth devices? Well, if you take a look at this list, there should be a name or two that rings a bell. Believe it or not, all of these cable and satellite providers use RF in some form or fashion as a means to distribute their channel lineups to the RF tuners in your televisions at home. Let's talk about transportation for a minute. Transportation is the true essence of what Z-Band does. We take the RF spectrum that we just mentioned a slide ago, and we transport it over structured cable, or call it what you will, twisted pair, CAT6, or perhaps most commonly known as Ethernet or computer cable. Relatively though, it's all the same. It's a piece of cabling that consists of eight copper wires. Those eight copper wires make up four pairs, hence the name twisted pair. Okay, so now we have the source, we have the transportation. Where are we gonna transport it to? A television, of course. So simply put, we use structured cable as a means to distribute RF video from a number of different sources to a display or multiple displays. Now we have this voice data video convergence, whereas before, structured cabling was a realm designed for only voice and IP. If you wanted to integrate video into your wiring infrastructure, a completely different and separate cable had to be run. This means more time to design a project, more time and money to install a project, more time to commission a project, and more to potentially go wrong with a project. CBN makes it easy by bringing these three worlds together over the same cable in a plug and play environment. People ask what markets Z-Band serves. If we take a look at this list of vertical markets, let's ask ourselves, where is there a need for cable or satellite television? Who could possibly benefit from the revenue generated by on-demand movies? Who might find it important to have multiple TVs following multiple networks because they need up-to-the-minute information on financial news and world events? Could you see any of these markets using digital signage or live video broadcast? The answer is yes, all of the above. And how do we know this? Because these are the markets that are currently using the ZBN product for one or more of the video applications that were just described. Feel free to pause the video at this time to review some of our current installs within the different vertical markets. Let's move on to the products themselves and some of the features of the system. Here we have the HD Video Hub that comes in both a 12 and 24 port version. Directly below the video hub is our free hanging and wall mount version of the Intelligent Balan. These two pieces of equipment work together to deliver the full spectrum of RF video over a single piece of structured cable. The full spectrum, or bandwidth if you will, refers to the RF frequency range of 5 to 860 megahertz. This frequency range is where all of your analog, standard definition, and high definition channels live. So depending on the channel count that you require, you can go completely analog and have up to 134 channels. Or double that number and go with high definition. If 268 high def channels isn't enough, there is always the option to go with standard def, and then your channel count ends up being over 1,000. There is also the option to mix and match your analog and high definition channels as well. Whatever you choose, please keep in mind that this is still only the RF portion of what we're sending over the cable. Along with that full RF video bandwidth, we're simultaneously transporting your standard 10100 Ethernet over the very same piece of structured cable. In just a few slides, we'll show you exactly how we do that. Backing up, though, for just a second, 268 high-definition channels are being distributed simultaneously over one cable. I want you to remember that because we're going to touch on the significance of that a few more times in this presentation. But for now, let's move on to the scalability of the product. 
The Z-band system has been designed to work within the limits of the 568 global wiring standard. For those of you not familiar with the standard, the standard states that in a structured cabling environment, the cable's distance from the closet to the cable's end destination is not to exceed a length of 100 meters or 300 feet. This refers to the horizontal portion of the cabling. In our case, this would be the max distance from the video hub to the intelligent ballon. The vertical portion of the system's cabling refers to the connection from video hub to video hub, which we refer to as cascading. The cabling used to connect the video hubs is referred to as the backbone. When the number of ports on a video hub has been exhausted, you simply connect another gigabud to accommodate your distribution needs. This process can be duplicated numerous times and maxes out to fit the needs of about 14,000 TVs. Through the implementation of different backbone cabling and adhering to the 568 wiring standard, the Z-band system is capable of meeting all of the physical requirements of a campus, multi-story building, or wide area network, all while consistently delivering a high quality picture to every TV within the system. This is all made possible by our automatic gain control technology that alleviates the need for any manual tuning because now all of the signal conditioning and amplification is done internally from video hub to intelligent ballon and from the master video hub to all of the satellite video hubs. The only setting that needs to be made with the entire system is the input level into the master video hub. If you can give us 23 dBmV flat for analog or 17 to 20 dBmV flat for digital, we guarantee the highest quality video up to 1080p at every TV. Let's talk about automatic gain control. Our automatic gain control works two ways. The first is from video hub to intelligent ballon. Along with all of that RF and IP that we are sending to the ballon, we've also sent an 8 volt DC current. By the time the 8 volts reaches the intelligent ballon, there should be some signal loss. The ballon measures the signal loss and once it knows what the loss in the 8 volts is, the ballon then knows the distance of the cable. Once we know the distance of the cable, the ballon has little microamplifiers, attenuators, and slopers that know just how to compensate for the loss of signal at any given distance within those 100 meters. This is what gives the system its plug-and-play nature and allows you to go from only a few meters to the max distance of 100 meters. The automatic gain control that we use from video hub to video hub is very similar, but instead of sending an 8 volt signal, we use a 240 megahertz pilot tone that we sneak in between the guard band of channel 26 and channel 27 on the RF spectrum. Moving on, let's get a better look at the equipment and show you how everything hooks up. Here we have a slightly closer view of the 12 and the 24 port video hub, which we have ever so cleverly named the Gigabud. BUD stands for Broadband Uniform Distribution. Now I know what you're thinking, this looks more like a 24 and a 48 port device, but I assure you that they are labeled correctly. The top row of ports and the bottom row of ports perform two separate jobs that we'll show you in just a minute. The rear view of the Gigabud will show you all of the terminations for the backbone. Starting on the far left we have the main CATV input. This is where the main RF video feed will be connected. This is also where the 23 dBmV flat for analog and 17 to 20 dBmV flat for digital comes into play. The main CATV input should only be used when feeding signal into a master gigabud. Now granted, any system can have multiple masters, but that's a video for another time. The next two terminations are the cascade in and the cascade out, followed by eight inbound terminations and eight outbound terminations. The reason for the inbound and the outbound terminations is because the system can be wired for bidirectionality. A bidirectional system is required for such applications as on-demand services and in some cases control capability. More towards the end of the presentation, we'll discuss applications that touch on the subject of on-demand services and control. Back to the cascading though. Once your master gigabud is receiving signal into the main CATV input, you then have the ability to cascade to eight more gigabuds, which are then referred to as a satellite, using the eight outbound terminations on the far right of the unit. That video feed is then connected to the cascade in of the satellite unit. This is considered one level of cascade. By continuing this process, this is how we're able to scale the system to 14,000 TVs. So now we know where the RF goes. If we spin the hub back around, hopefully you can see that the top row of ports is labeled aux and the bottom row is labeled video. 
to incorporate IP, you would just come out of your router or switch and plug into any one of the top row of ports. Now with RF being fed into the back of the hub and IP being fed into the top port, the corresponding bottom port will now distribute the combined RF and IP signal. Once the combined signal reaches its final destination, the RF and the IP have to be separated. This is one of the secondary features of the intelligent ballon, which we have appropriately named the Gigabob. The Bob stands for breakout box, because that's exactly what it does. The combined RF and IP on the structured cable is fed into the RJ45 connector labeled two wall, and the two signals are broken apart and the IP is passed through the secondary RJ45 labeled aux, and the RF is passed through the coax terminator labeled 2TV. Now let's take a quick look at how we share the sheath, because I'm sure there's a lot of IT folks in the audience, and you might be saying to yourself, I don't think RF over the network is such a good idea. Well, you're right, and that's why we don't do it. On a piece of structured cable, there are eight wires, and those eight wires make up four pairs. Standard 10100 Ethernet only requires the use of two of those pair, pins 1, 2, 3, and 6. Our system simply just passes Ethernet. We don't tap into it, we don't condition it, we only pass it. This leaves us with two unused pairs, pins 4 and 5 and pins 7 and 8. Now do you remember the 268 HD channels that we mentioned earlier? We're sending all of those channels simultaneously over the last unused pair, pins 7 and 8. The entire RF video bandwidth from 5 to 860 megahertz over just one pair. And this consumes no network bandwidth. We are simply using an unused pair for RF transportation. At no time does the RF travel upstream and back to the router or switch. The video hub or Gigabud doesn't allow that to happen. If we look more closely at this picture of the Gigabob, you will see that the Ethernet pins just jump from the two wall jack to the auxiliary jack. The RF on pin 7 and 8 is fed into the patented automatic ink control circuitry and then to the coax terminator. Then with a coax patch cable, you can then connect to your display. The only pins that we haven't talked about now are pins 4 and 5. These pins only come into play when there is need for return path video or video on demand. The most common platforms for this would be FSK or DOCSIS 3.0. Now let's talk applications quick. This is the basic system layout. TV signal is fed into the CATV input on the back of the video hub, and then from any one of the lower ports on the front of the Gigabud, you can connect to your standard patch panel. And then from the patch panel, the signal continues over the cable run to the RJ45 wall plate, to the Gigabob, and then connects to the TV with a small piece of coax. Now we've taken the basic system layout and included the IP portion. The IP source is connected into the corresponding top port and then broken out at the ballon. This slide also depicts the incorporation of a set top box that would delegate between the two sources. This could be either IP video streaming or IP control. Or perhaps you incorporate an IP TV and do away with the need for a set top box. Video on demand services are similar to the IP solution because in most cases a set top box is required. And if you'll notice, the ballon that we're using is now equipped with a diplexer. The diplexer allows the FSK or DOCSIS communication to travel upstream on pins 4 and 5 to communicate with the video server. Remote video origination can be easy with the addition of an IP camera. The video signal from the camera is transported over the network, and through the use of a computer interface, that video can be modulated to a channel and be redistributed through the system as a channel. A video projector would integrate easily through the addition of an RF tuner that can be installed into any laptop or computer. The same goes for a smart board. You just need an RF tuner in your laptop or PC. Controlling TVs can be done through our system as well with the addition of RS-232 or IR control. This will give you the ability to turn TVs on and off, change channels, or turn groups of TVs to a select channel or an emergency channel. Let's talk video source now for a minute, or what we refer to as a head end. A head end can be any one video source or a combination of sources. The sources could be off air channels, a satellite feed, or a regular CATV feed that would be connected to the distribution system. Here we have a nice illustration of what could be a typical head end. This can be a completely customizable channel lineup. 
For instance, we have a few digital signage players at the top left, and below we have a few HD cable boxes. With the HD cable boxes, you can select the station that you want from your cable provider, and then the output of the cable box is rechannelized through the use of a QAM modulator. The same is done with the video output of the signage players. Once the video sources have been rechannelized, they are then combined and fed into the Gigabud, and then all of your channels are easily accessed at your TV through the use of your standard remote. There are a number of different companies that make QAM modulators that allow you to take a number of different video sources and convert them to an RF channel. This gives you a lot of different options when picking your channel lineup. This modulator that we're looking at right now has the ability to accept an HDMI connection, and this opens the door for HD cable boxes, satellite receivers, DVD and Blu-ray players, as long as the content is not HDCP protected, media players, and digital signage players. They also accept the feed from a component source, and even a VGA. The ability to channelize a VGA connection from a PC or laptop opens the door to your most basic form of digital signage. Get yourself a good graphic designer and PowerPoint, and you can distribute your message to thousands of TVs. Channelizing an HDMI or VGA source also opens the door for remote control through the use of cloud technology, or take it one step further by incorporating a tablet. Whatever you decide to do, though, the ZBN engineering staff is available to make design recommendations and answer technical and troubleshooting questions via phone and email. In closing, this is a great product that can deliver the full spectrum of RF video simultaneously with IP over a single piece of structured cable up to 100 meters. It's a great migration path to IP video that eliminates the need for any manual tuning. It's easy to design and maintain. It's bi-directional. The system now integrates the world of video into the world of voice and data, leaving you compatible with today, but ready for tomorrow. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the Z-Band Video Distribution Solution. We'll see you next time.